Hello and welcome to another episode of Agape Dads. I'm Julian Cortez. Today we have the great pleasure of hearing from Anthony Badger, father of four. How are you doing, Anthony? I'm doing good, man. How are you? I'm doing good myself. And if you could just take us on a journey of what your childhood was like growing up. So I'm one of two. I have a younger brother. Uh, we're three years apart. Raised mostly by my mom and her sisters and my grandmothers. Uh, my dad was in and out of our life. Um, but for the most part, from like the first grade to like se my seventh grade, so my first grade to seventh grade, he wasn't around. Uh, and then he came back into the picture like around seventh grade, eighth grade. And still, like the relationship wasn't the best. We would always butt heads, a lot of issues. Uh, so, like I say, I tell people all the time, if it wasn't for my mom and my aunts and my grandmother, I don't know where I'd be today. You know, and I, and I owe most of my life to them. Has your childhood impacted you as a dad today? It has, because I just look back and I remember the fact about how my mom struggled just to raise us, to provide for us. So I've always wanted to work hard, like to make sure that my kids don't have to go through the things that we've, that I, I went through, my brother and I mm -hmm. went through. Um, so I'm constantly, you know, trying to make sure that they're good. I try to provide for them, try to make sure that, you know, they don't have to worry about lights getting cut off. You know, I remember back in the day, our lights getting cut off. You know what I mean? Like, I grew up in the hood, man. So <laughs> the lights get cut off. You know what you do? You, you knock on the neighbor's door. Luckily, you know, my mom and the neighbor was mad cool. Run extension cord to the crib, you know, <laughs> plug up the refrigerator to make sure you got the refrigerator going and lights. So things like that. I don't want my kids to have to worry about those type of things. You know what I mean? So I work hard to try to make sure that they're, you know, sheltered from that kind of thing. Right. Now, if you could just uh, tell us, what was the day like when you first became a dad? Oh, man. Uh, I became a dad November 2nd. I get the math messed up all the time. <laughs> We're in 2020 now, so 2003. That would be 17 years ago, yeah. Uh, I had my first daughter. She said she's going to be 17 in November with my uh, high school sweetheart. Um, and I just remember not being ready. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? Wasn't ready at all. At all. Like, but, uh, yeah, yeah. Wow. Uh, have there been any challenges, uh, that you face and what were some practical ways of, of handling those things? Uh, challenges. Um, I mean, there's a lot of challenges per se, at least with my, uh, with my ex raising my daughter. Uh, we just have two different ways of wanting to raise children. You know what I mean? Like I'm more of, you know, I like to be in my kid's business especially hers because she's almost 17. Like, I want to know who you're talking to, who you're texting, who you're talking to on the phone, who you're going out with. And my ex, her mother, is more like, oh, I trust her. You know, you don't got to worry about her. And I'm, I'm just always like, you got to worry about everybody. Right. At the end of the day, she's a teenager. You know what I mean? So I'm more of the fact, walking by, you know, she's on her phone, you know, texting. I'll just snatch the phone out of her hand and see who she's <laughs> texting, see what's going on, look at some pictures, see what's going on. Only because, you know, she may be innocent, but at the end of the day, you don't know what she's talking to people about, what's going on. So when it comes to her, you know, I'm very protective. She's my only daughter. Mm -hmm. Have you ever experienced any challenges with allergies or any health issues with your kids? Yeah. Uh, so my daughter doesn't have any allergies, but my three sons have allergies. And my middle son, Elijah, he has the worst allergies of them all. Wow. Um, we joke on him. We call him the bubble child because literally he's in a bubble. Um, he can't have dairy. Hmm. And people don't think about it when you say dairy. He can't have dairy. So he can't have eggs, can't have cheese, can't have ice cream, none of that stuff. Can't have peanut butter, can't have no type of nuts, no soy. Uh, so he drinks rice milk. Like, and I can only get, and it's crazy because he's, he can't drink all types of rice milk. He can only drink one specific, specific brand of rice wow. milk. And that's from Trader Joe's. So when I go, I buy cases of it only because he's got to eat cereal and that's the only milk he can drink. Uh, so we worry about him only because of the fact that his allergies are really, really bad. Uh, he's been hospitalized three times, wow. which means he's got, you know, the paramedics had to come by. Uh, he's been shot with the EpiPen three times. And it's not, it's not joyful. He hates it. You know what I mean? Like, so he is very mindful now going on nine years old that you know he knows what he can't have you know he watches people like a hawk when they're touching stuff when they're eating mm -hmm. certain things because he doesn't want to end up back in the hospital again like he like he was three times in the past wow well how would you describe yourself as a as a father uh i can be laid back i'm pretty laid back until like you know kids piss you off kids getting your nerves <laughs> you know like i had this thing like you know 
my wife is always like, put the kids in bed, put them in bed, like on Fridays and Saturday nights. And I'm like, listen, they don't got no school tomorrow. It is what it is. Let them hang out. And I always tell them, listen, I'll let you guys step as late as you want. <laughs> don't you start fighting. It's a wrap. You know what I mean? Like, so I try to like not, not be so strict. I try to like give them enough rope to hang themselves. Uh, but I can go, you know, like anybody, you know, I got a lot of kids. I got three boys in the house <laughs> all the time. They're wrestling, they're fighting, they're playing. It, it. So it can be rough, but I try to keep a level head when, you know, when it comes to them. What are your thoughts of fathers being looked at as the disciplinarians and mothers being the nurturers? No, I think it's got to be 50-50. I don't think that fathers should be the only disciplinarians in the house, uh, especially if you're married and, you, you know, you're raising your children together. Uh, I really feel like kids need to respect each parent mm -hmm. equally. Uh, mm -hmm. Now, even though I say that, my kids treat myself differently. They treat my wife differently, you know. Um, they don't test me, you know, but they're constantly testing her. And I hate, you know, getting phone calls from her or text messages whenever I leave the house, you know, that the kids are acting up, they don't, you know, she's stressed out. Mm -hmm. I try to explain to them that, you know, they got to respect her as the woman of the house. You know, it's three boys plus me. So it's four men in the house. Mm -hmm. They got to respect her for who she is. She's the queen, you know, like this, ultimately this is her house. So they got to respect her. They got to, you know, understand. I tell them all the time. I was raised by my mother, two aunts, grandmother. I respect them to this day. My mother lives in my house. It's hard, yeah. <laughs> but I still respect her for who she is. She's my mother. We we butt heads, but I respect her for who she is. They gotta respect their mother, you know, especially because they're kids. They're not adults. <laughs> right. What would you say are some of the rewards of being a dad? Man, rewards. There are a lot of rewards. Um, I coach my kids. I love, you know, I, I I'm very proud to be a dad. I really am. You know, you have your bad days, you have your good days, but my kids make me happy. Whenever I'm down, I look at their faces, you know, it makes me happy. Uh, I love supporting them, whatever they want to do. Mm -hmm. It's just, it, it's, it really is joyful. It really is. Um, I coach basketball for them. I help them out with baseball. Uh, my youngest son right now is trying to learn how to play the guitar by himself. <laughs> so it's hilarious. We bought him a guitar for Christmas. Yeah. And he's, you know, he was supposed to get lessons, but now with all this coronavirus stuff, he can't go anywhere. So he's always just walking around the house playing random tunes, you know, singing to himself. <laughs> and it's just moments like that, you know, that make me proud. That's good. Um, are there any particular subjects or ideologies that you're going to be passionate or that you are already teaching your kids? I mean, right now, I just try to teach my kids, you know, to respect people. I, I'm, I'm constantly telling them about their education. I'm constantly telling them that I want them to be a better man than I am. I want them to be more successful than me and their mother, you know, uh, and to do that, they have to have a good education. You know, I tell them all the time, like, look, just, just to look around, you know, like my parents goal for me and my brother for, uh, well, for us to be more successful than they were. Those are my goals for my kids. I want them to be successful. You know, I want them to have families. I want to be a grandfather one of these days. I'm looking forward to being a grandfather. Yeah. I want to be that, that grandfather who spoils the kids and be like, all right, taking you home now, you know? <laughs> Uh, but yeah. What, what are your thoughts on, um, kids being bullied nowadays in playgrounds and in schools? Uh, have you, any of your kids ever experienced that before? So I'm a bit advocate of not being bullied. I hate bullies. Mm -hmm. I hate it. I hate it with a passion. Um, so my oldest son, they, they try to say that he was a bully once before and he really wasn't a bully. He's not a bully. But he was in a group, he was with his friends, you know, and we live in a predominantly white neighborhood. Mm -hmm. And they were all walking home from school and they were just joking on one of the other kids, you know. They were saying, ah, oh, you got a girlfriend, this girl likes you, ha, ha, ha. She's always saying she likes you. Mm -hmm. And the crossing guard overheard them making fun of, of, of the boy. Uh, but at the time, my son was the loudest, you know. So my wife and I got a phone call that, you know, they want to talk to us because he was being a bully. And I was like... It's, it's hard to explain to our kids that, you know, people are going to see you differently. Right. You know, we, we're, we're, you know, black people who live in a predominantly white neighborhood. My sons, believe it or not, are the only black people in their class. <laughs> they don't have black friends in their classes. They're the only one. So I try to explain to them that they can't do the same things that everybody else does. And it, it's always hard conversations, you know. 
it takes me time to sit down and think about what I'm going to say to them just so they understand at the end of the day that people are going to see you differently no matter what. And it's up to you to show them that, listen, I may have a different skin color, but you know, don't label me before you speak to me and right. see who I am. Is there any advice that you would give dads or even parents together that um, will allow them to teach their kids about diversity? It's just rough. I would just, you know, try to have an open mind, you know? Uh, and I always feel like kids that live in the inner city mm-hmm. don't deal with, you know, the diversity issue as much because they, they go to school with peers, with people that look like them, you know, right. I don't think kids ultimately see color, you know, and I feel like when kids do see color, it's because of their parents. It's, it comes from their, you know, their, their home. Yeah. Essentially, what are some things that you want to make sure you instill in each of your children? I just want to make my kids understand. My thing is I want them to be better than me. You know, my wife and I have this thing that, you know, uh, I have a mentor. I would kind of say a mentor, a good friend, uh, my barber. You know, he, obviously he's not cutting my hair, <laughs> but uh, he cuts my kids' hair. He has four kids, and his whole life, you know, he worked hard to be able to give his kids an upper hand when they graduate college. Uh, and he's giving them all a house, you know. And that's what I want to do for my kids. I want, you know, my wife and I spoke about it, and, you know, we want to leave them like mm-hmm. a piece of property or give them some type of money to be able to go out and put a down payment on the house. Right. But I want I want my kids to work hard, you know, go to school, get a good education, work hard, and be able to start, you know, their life, their official life, you know, after college with an upper hand, you know. And those are, those are our goals. Mm-hmm. Why Why is education so important for you? I just feel like, you know, education is important to me because – Unlike when we were growing up, you could mm-hmm. get a hookup get a, to get a good job. As long as you had that high school degree or even a GED, you knew the right person, you get a hookup. You know, you get your foot in the door and, and to work up to get that good job and, you know, good salary. You can't get that nowadays. You at least need an associate's degree. And even an associate's degree is rough. You need that bachelor's degree just to get your foot in the door. And I feel like without a proper education, you just can't, you can't succeed. You can't survive. Not, not in these days. Right. It's so not like it was back in the day. If, if someone was to ask your kids what their childhood is like when they're older, what would you hope that they would say? I would hope, you know, that they would say their childhood is amazing. You mm-hmm. know, they, they get a lot of, they have a lot of stuff, man. Like, they don't have to worry about things. They don't struggle. Yeah. You know, when they say, you know, Daddy, my sneakers are too small. Can I get another pair of sneakers? We go out and buy another pair of sneakers. And I always explain to them, Daddy didn't have it like that growing up. I tell my mom, sneakers are too small. She's like, uh, we got to wait till next paycheck, buddy. Or, oh, give me, give me two paychecks. And we had to rock out like that. You know what I mean? Like, so I try to explain to them, like, listen, it's hard out there. You know, you got to be grateful for what you get. You got to understand what's going on in life. Um, yeah, I just, I just want them to understand that life is good for them. And they, I think they know that. They see, you know, we go to church every Sunday. Well, we were going to church every Sunday. Now we attend virtual church <laughs> online. But uh, I think they understand, and I think they know they have a good life. You know, it's funny, my son, because we pray every night. My youngest son, Joshua, we pray every night. And he always wants to pray and ask God to cover everybody's suffering, who, who may not have a, a roof over their head, who may not have food on the table. And then he's always praying nowadays, like, please don't let people die from COVID-19. He doesn't even call it coronavirus. Wow. He's like, he's yeah. like, Lord, please don't let people die from COVID-19. And if they right. get it, please help them to be, be okay. Wow. And that's his prayer every night. And, and, you know, just to hear that, you know, my wife and I, we look at each other all the time and, we, and you know, we smile, you know, because at least, you know, he knows, you know what I mean? He's, he's not worried about himself. He's worried about everybody else also. And that, you know, in the future or even now, what do you look forward most as a dad? Uh, I look forward to my kids all graduating college, you know, having successful careers, you know, having their own families. Uh, and then I feel like I could be at peace, you know what I mean? Knowing that I raised, you know, three, you know, boys that respect women. I raised a, a beautiful daughter, you know, who's smart and has a good education. Um, and I feel like my job is finally done, you know, to see them make it. If once, as long as they make it and they turn out to be okay, I feel like my job is done. Yeah. What, knowing what you know now, what would Anthony tell himself before becoming a dad? What advice would he give him? Uh, 
knowing what I know now, you know, even though I have, my, I have a daughter, right? You, you guys already know I have a daughter. She's 17, gonna be 17. Mm-hmm. She was, you know, before I got married. Um, I love my daughter. I'm glad she's here. But knowing what I know now, I wouldn't have had a kid out of wedlock. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. I, I just wouldn't have because of the fact that the relationship didn't work. The reason why the relationship didn't work is because God knew that I wasn't supposed to be in that relationship. Mm-hmm. It was a bad relationship. I, act, I would always ask the Lord, please help me get out of this relationship. <laughs> and he would always help me get out. And what would I do? I would go back, wow. go back, go back. Three times, go back. Last time she got pregnant. Wow. You know, and we tried to make it work, you know, for, for her sake. And it still didn't work. Uh, so knowing what I know now, I would tell myself, you know, when the Lord releases you, <laughs> stay away. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, and, and not to say I wouldn't never have my daughter. It probably would just came from my wife, you know, and it would have been an easier, a easier road. Because uh, it's hard to raise her from afar. She lives in the Bronx. I live in New Jersey. Uh, and I don't always see eye to eye with her mother. So it's, it's difficult. So, you know, knowing, knowing now, I would have not, you know, I would have stayed away, you know, when the Lord released me from that relationship. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but I, after that, I wouldn't do anything different. Like, I, my, I love my wife. She's great. She's a great woman. Uh, my three boys, they're great. You know, and we're, and we're trying to, you know, teach them proper values, you know, teach them how to live, how to, how to do for others. So I wouldn't change anything else. Not at all. How difficult is it to co-parent with someone who is not on the same page as you? It's very difficult, you know, only because, you know, I like to do things differently. Like I'm very strict with when it comes to my main thing is education because mm-hmm. I just know that without it, you can't get far. Right. Um, and then I just have this thing with social media nowadays. Like I'm so anti-social media. <laughs> I'm so in, like, I used to have all these social media pages. I have nothing anymore. I only have Facebook. Yeah. But co-parenting is rough because, like, I believe at a certain time, cell phones will be taken away. I take my, my wife and I would take my son's cell phone away. Yeah. A certain time, you don't need it, especially when you're sleeping. <laughs> you, you can't, it, it's no reason. Right. It's, it's no reason. Uh, and I think when you go to the bathroom, take a shower, you don't need it. Right. You know? I just, I just feel like kids, you know, they're not as smart as adults. And there's no reason you need your phone in certain places. And this is a problem when it comes to, you know, mm-hmm. co-parenting with my ex because she just gives my daughter, she lets my daughter do whatever she wants. And we get into a lot of heated discussions only because I just feel like you got to put your foot down sometimes, you know. You're not, you're not friends. We're parents before we're friends. I tell my kids all the time, you know, when they mistake that. I'm like, I'm your father first. We can right. be friends after. Uh, and for instance, like my daughter, she'll be up till four o'clock in the morning. <laughs> wow. What are you doing up at four o'clock in the morning? <laughs> yeah. You know, because I'll randomly send her a text. Like if I'm on my way to work, you know, I leave my house at 3.30, 3.45. I'll randomly send her a text message. Hey, do, hey, sweetie, I love you. Have a good day at school. So when she wakes up, she sees it. Right. And she responds. <laughs> yeah. And I'm like, right. <laughs> what are you doing up? And yeah. she, oh, I, I'm just watching TV. I'm like, you need to be sleeping. Oh, I'm not tired. And I'll text her mother. Her mother will text me later on, hours later. <laughs> well, you know, I let her do what she wants. No. No. Right. You know? So things like that, it's rough to co-parent. It, it really is. Uh, but luckily, like I said, my daughter's very smart. She gets good grades. She's doing good in school. So... Yeah. What advice would you give someone who's probably thinking of getting a divorce and the impact that it's going to have on their children, but also someone who's probably trying to co-parent right now? Is there any, any advice that you can give them to work things out? Yeah. I just feel like before people, you know, jump to getting divorced, mm-hmm. I would definitely suggest therapy. Like, I don't think there's anything wrong with therapy. Mm-hmm. Uh, because I don't think people fall out of love. I mean, people, oh, we fell out of love. No, I don't, I don't believe that. You think, I think you just stop loving. Right. Right. Um, my wife and I, we've been to therapy before, you know, and it, it's helped. We've been at that several times. We've been to therapy because guess what? People change, you know, and in order to make sure that relationship works, 
sometimes you need somebody else to listen, you know, because right. a lot of times people talk to each other, but they're not talking to, they're talking at, you know, so I think before anyone thinks about getting divorced, try therapy and really try it. Don't just say, oh, I went one time, like give it time, you know, uh, because what you got to think about when you get divorced, it, it not only affects you, it affects the kids and it affects the kids a lot. You know, I have a, a sister-in-law and brother-in-law who are going through divorce now. They're not divorced yet, but they, they're separated and it's split up and it affects their children mm -hmm. every day, every day. So I just feel like, you know, try, speak, figure it, you know, try to talk, figure it out before you, you know. Are there any memorable moments that you think back and smile on or laugh on about your kids? Uh, I get a lot of joy and pleasure. And, I, and you know, I've, I've recently started coaching my kids in travel basketball and my two older boys, you know, uh, just coaching them. I love it. You know what I mean? I, I just, mm -hmm. I get, I, even win or lose, you know, just helping them out and to see the joy that they get. It's not even about the joy I get. It's about the joy that they get from me helping them to become better basketball players or just to invest my time in helping them to get better at basketball. It brings me, I, I love it. I love it. Um, also, my daughter, she, you know, she had a Sweet 16 last year. <laughs> yeah, yeah, November last year, November, November 2019. And just to see her grow up, you know, from, from when she was born to now. I can't believe I have a 16-year-old. Yeah. You know, she's going to be 17 this year. I, I, I just can't believe it. But it brings me joy to see the woman that she's become, you know. Is there any advice that you could give men who probably don't have that relationship with their daughters that, um, that they can implement to hopefully get to know their daughter in a different, in a different way? Yeah, I just feel like you can't treat your sons and daughters differently. You know, you just got to be able to talk to them, you know, no matter what. Like, I pick up my daughter on Fridays and we just talk in the car. Hey, I was school. Mm -hmm. and you can't, like, this is one thing that my wife really instilled in me. You can't ask them questions. That's going to get, get you a one-word answer. Mm. So I can't be like, how was school today? Fine. No, 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 no. Hey, how was school? What'd you guys do today? Tell me all about it. How was math? You know, so you can get into that conversation. You know, you can't be afraid of your daughters. Uh, and it starts with just conversations, you know, be a little more gentle with them. You know, don't be so stern. Don't have that iron fist with them. You can do that with the boys, but with your daughters, you just got to be a little more sensitive with them, you know, because they're just different. But uh, it always starts with conversations. You have to have really good conversations with them. That's great. Thank you so much. I think that's a great advice to end on. Uh, so I just want to thank you, Aunt. So um, I hope that things work out for you and, and the missus and with the whole co-parenting. You seem to be on your way to, to great success yourself and being a great dad as well. Thank you so much for being on the program. Thank you. Appreciate it, man. Thanks. And thank you for watching another episode of Agape Dads. For more information, you can go over to our website at agapedads.com. You can go to the YouTube channel and subscribe to that. And if you're on the go, make sure to download the podcast. Thanks again. Thanks for watching.